England, June 1938. The recently widowed Edith Pretty was living in a big mansion in a picturesque corner of East Anglia. The mansion had been built by her late husband, who had bought quite some arable land too. The land was rich, but it wasn't wheat, peas and beans that kept drawing Mrs. Pretty to this land. She was interested in the most peculiar of the garden ornaments, some mounds from a bygone age. She hired a local archaeologist named Basil Brown, who started to investigate the mounds with expertise and patience. Mr. Brown, with the patronage of Mrs. Pretty, was about to discover the burial ship of Saturn Hoop. It is one of the most beautiful and remarkable discoveries in European archaeology. A Dark Ages warrior, perhaps a king, had been buried in a huge ship under the mound. He was buried with all the things he'd need in the next life. His beautiful helmet has become iconic. It's simply too beautiful to be ignored. What I'm interested in is not the helmet or the king's war gear. Buried with this king of old, there was a small object that easily takes a back seat. At the king's waist, there was a highly decorated purse. It was made of leather, so it was by now long gone. But Mr. Brown found 40 coins from Francia, which was a clear sign that the man had international connections. The purse lid was decorated in a very exquisite fashion. Two parallel decorations are on the outside of the lid. They represent a standing man surrounded by two wild animals. A thousands of years old connection between the Dark Ages Europe and Bronze Age Mesopotamia had just been discovered. The standing man surrounded by beasts is a recurrent motif that academics call Master of Animals. It's more than 5,000 years old, and evidence of it has been found throughout the world. One of the earliest examples comes from Mesopotamia, from around the year 4000 before the Common Era, and it's depicted on a sealed stamp. They were a symbol of transferable authority, like paper money. They don't have real value, but we accept them as a means of payment because they have old presidents printed on them and because a higher authority issues them. So Bronze Age people saw these seals with a master of animals imprinted on them and they understood it as an official thing. But this motif was not imprinted on seals only. It has been found on the Egyptian Gebel el Arak knife, an object we previously mentioned in an episode. So if you're interested, go check it out after this one. On the handle of the knife, you can see the master of animals dividing wild beasts. But this motif was on musical instruments, on official weight, on much later seals, on pedestals, on pottery, and of course it was in the form of small statues too. It was so influential that it can be found in very remote corners of the world compared to the hustling and bustling Mesopotamia. For example, on this cauldron from Denmark, or the seal from modern-day Pakistan. Okay, okay, I will stop showing you stuff. I guess you've gotten the point. The master of animals was very widespread. But you know how some internet memes become fashionable overnight and turn cringe in two days? The master of animals has been used for 5,000 years. How is it possible that such a symbol of power has been considered so relevant by so many people in so many areas of the world? What does it actually represent? Archaeologists tend to overuse the term ritual object. Sometimes this is quite hilarious, but I do have a point. For us, people living with computers, reusable space rockets and stuff, it is quite hard to imagine what people of the past used to think on a very deep level. But we can make some educated guesses. In the first instance, the message could appear very clear. The master of animals is some kind of king or high priest, representing order and civilization. He's taming the forces of chaos and nature. 
The bulk of pre-industrial societies was formed by farmers who were very exposed to the winds of weather. Too little rain could ruin your income. Hail could mean that your entire family is going to die in a couple of months. And what about a scorching hot summer? Life was very hard, but the king had immense wealth. He had stores of grain, oil, and maybe some smoked meat too. Yummy! And if you were very lucky and the season was right, maybe he had some beer to spare as well. Yay! The king used this wealth to pay people, who in turn dug dikes and canals. Irrigation is how the chaos was tamed. But if this is what the master of animals represents, why did I put some wild animals on this symbol and not some canals? You know, it's quite likely that the master of animals is much older than we think. It's probably an open window from a bygone age. It is quite likely that this image comes from a time when no one could claim to be a king. The master is a god whose favor influenced your destiny. He was probably the god of hunters, who decided the success or the failure of your hunt. Eventually, one day hunters left their bows and became farmers. Yet, the master was on their mind there as well as wild predators can always slaughter herds and destroy livelihoods. So, to sum things up, an image that comes from a time when not a single city existed has been so relevant to us that we kept it viral for thousands of years. Think about it. When we discover new cures for diseases or explore outer space, aren't we taming wild nature too? So, maybe the master of animals is still relevant today? Anyway, my name is Sarah. See you next time in the mists of time. <laughs>